So Neil, man, how, how's things? You're usually a, a very active fighter, but you haven't fought in you know, 13 months at this point. How, how are you dealing with all that? Um, to be honest, it was pretty hard. It was pretty difficult trying to get over this whole USADA situation um, and getting back to a position where I'm able to compete again. Um, but it's cool to be able to come out tonight and like uh, be here with a teammate and be able to like, experience what it's like to be in a fight week again uh, before actually making that walk in a fight week myself. We saw that you were here to see uh, accelerated with the veterans. Uh, Arlington, how was that experience? Oh man, that was a mind-blowing experience. I mean, uh, I spent seven years in the Army, so uh, to be able to come back to uh, D.C. and be able to meet uh, Chief of Staff of the Army, so many other people who are high up in the Army, and uh, go to Arlington Cemetery and visit there, it was a pretty cool experience. I mean, I, that's something I would never get to do um, as a missing soldier, so to be able to come back and do it as a civilian with the UFC uh, was truly an honor for me to do. Was it cold too bad for you? It was okay. I'm sorry, was that? The cold weather? <laughs> um, luckily, the UFC's uh, equipment team had me covered with a jacket, so uh, they came through in the clutch for me. <laughs> Obviously, there's been a, a lot of frustration over the past year, but when you see you know Nate Diaz come out and kind of get uh, you know his reputation cleared, and you started making changes to the uh, drug testing policy, do you feel a little bit uh, more vindicated? Um, no, not at all. I mean, the work that I put in the five months prior to the, uh, Nate Diaz situation is why um, Nate Diaz was able to get clear within a couple of days. I mean, um, by the time Nate Diaz was situation happened, um, the rule set was already in place and uh, changes were already being made. Um, I was actually happy for him that um, because of what I went through and a couple of athletes went through, um, the changes have already been put in place and uh, he was able to go out there and continue his uh, career. It wasn't sidetracked or pulled back at all. How difficult was the position you were put in? Because you know you drop off of a card. Everyone assumes if it's not an injury, oh, you're cheating, you're on something. And uh, you know you chose to come out and talk about it, but it can't be an easy spot to be in. Uh, definitely, it was pretty difficult at first. I mean, uh, um, before you saw the UFC, both they admitted that or they accepted the fact that they weren't going to make it public uh, why a fighter got pulled and he left it up to the fighter. Uh, so it put me in a weird position, a pin position where uh, I was five days off from a fight and it was like, hey, Neil's not fighting anymore. Um, and it kind of put me in a position where, well, do I, do I lie to the fans? Do I lie to the media? Do I lie to uh, people around me and say that I'm injured when I'm not injured? Or um, do I just come out and face the facts? And uh, that's what I chose to do. Um, fortunately, a lot of people, uh, fans, media, everyone in general, um, kind of was with me on that whole process like I did. There's no way you cheated. There's no way you deceived anyone. Um, what's really going on behind the scenes here? We're with you and we're, we're ready to find out what happened. So um, I was grateful for those guys who stayed with me during the entire 13 months that I've been out now. So now that you're able to move forward, I mean, What's the timetable? What's the plan? Because I understand you've got a, a child on the way and everything. <laughs> yeah, so for me it's February. So uh, at first I was kind of worried that I was going to be fighting in January. Um, the only two dates in January as of now are January 18th and January 25th. Uh, we have a due date of January 20th. So um, knowing that I'm fighting in February as opposed to January was a little bit relieving for me. And uh, now I'm just super excited. I mean, I can go out there and uh, earn a living for my, not just myself, but my whole family now. So it's just that much more motivation to go out there and put on a great show. Fighting in February, though, and having the baby come late in January, how is, you know, What's the last couple weeks of your camp going to look like? Is it going to be you know stressful? Like, what are you doing to, I guess, prepare yourself for just what that's going to be like? Uh, so I'm not even being, uh, I'm not even exaggerating right now. I've actually learned how to sleep with headphones in. So uh, my wife's going to step up and uh, uh, run the home when I finish out my last two weeks of training camp or whatever, whatever it may be. And uh, I just have to make sure I'm well rested and able to go out there and perform my best. So uh, right now it's just one of those things where I'll need her as much as she needs me to go out there and make it happen. How do you learn to sleep with headphones? Is that just like lots of plane rides? <laughs> We've seen a plane ride just uh, getting comfortable sleeping on my back without moving side to side. I mean, uh, especially with cauliflower, it's not really easy to do, but uh, thank God I had a wife like, like I do that's going to be able to take up and uh, uh, pick up the slack when I can't. Um, financially, how, how much did you, it cost you to get your name cleared? Did you have to like, pay for legal fees, testing? I mean um, so the whole process is pretty uh, costly. I mean, uh, you have to hire a lawyer, um, have to send out uh, roughly eight different supplements to get tested. Um, and testing, uh, luckily UFC was able to help with some of that. Um, testing is anywhere from $200 to $500 per supplement you're getting tested. Um, you can batch them to try to get, make the cost a little bit cheaper, but when you uh, batch them together, the uh, the potency or the, the, the scrutiny of the testing is not as clear. So it's best to send them individually and get them tested that way. Um, so between legal fees, missing a payday and uh, having to hire uh, a lawyer to combat this whole thing, it was pretty costly, but uh, it, it worked out. I'm clear I'm able to go out there and earn a living now, so I'm um, hit the ground running in 2020. Did you just, just go off on your savings the last year? Or like, <laughs> that seems like pretty tough. I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna lie and say it was easy. I mean, it definitely put me in a position that was kind of awkward. I mean, um, I, I got pulled from the fight literally five days from uh, from the fight happening. So at that point, uh, plane tickets were already booked, the hotel room was already booked, train camp was already paid for, um, train partners were flown in and uh, and everything like that. Um, and those things were taken care of. So it, it definitely was a huge deficit when I found out that I wasn't gonna be fighting in, in those five days. But uh, you just have to adjust with it. And luckily, I was. Uh, it was to put things aside and, and uh, account for, for these unforeseen situations. You've been out of action for quite a while. Do you believe in cage Um, not at all. I mean, uh, I think one of the biggest things for me is just like, that visualization of me being here tonight. Like, I'm sitting there cage side, um, in my mind, I'm playing that scenario over and over and over. Like, every fighter that's walking out to the, uh, the cage tonight, I'm watching my guy. That's going to be me in a few months. How do I see myself walking out there? How do I see myself interacting with the crowd? How do I see myself um, getting ready to be in that cage? So, um, being able to be cage side and get that visualization, I think it's going to help me a lot um, going into my fight in February, um, especially at this long lay layoff. Yeah, no problem. Yes. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, guys.